Wait, I told you not to forget my bless. But what did you do? I'm in so much pain. You forgot to use my bless, damn it. Kill me. Not while I'm around. Cleric, the holy priest. But without the molest Cleric, the healer. Uh, kind of. Mostly? Sometimes? Uh, not really. When we think of a healer in any kind of RPG, usually you think of some kind of over-armored pussy sitting at the back of a pack with barely enough game knowledge to shake a stick at. And every time DPS players fuck up and fail to do the only job they're paid to do, everyone always turns to the poor healer. Playing the party healer is like playing MOBAs with four Polacks. Nothing you do is right and every second or third word you hear is a KURVA! However, in D&D and to that extent Baldur's Gate, Cleric is a tank. Spellcaster, Buffer, Healer, the Melee Brawler, the Sneak, the Party's Mom, the Party's Asshole, and much more! The amount of hats that Cleric can and will wear in a single campaign is tantamount to Team Fortress 2. Practically speaking, Cleric does have the most healing capability, but that does not mean that you're bound to be the healer. Aside from the Wizard, Cleric has the most subclasses, at least in Baldur's Gate, and all of them are about the same, but with slightly different flavor text. Okay, that's a bit too simplified. There are minor changes that do impact your playstyle actually more than you think. Though, just like religions themselves, I'm left asking. Why the fuck does every brand of abuser needs its own cult? It's bad enough we have veganism, crypto scamism, and those weirdos who worship dogs, when the only religion that's worth the effort is METAL and cats. Preferably, METAL CATS! Hey, Bob, how do you make holy water? I need healing! You boil the hell out of it! Ah! Fundamentally, as the representative of bad life choices, I mean cult pastor, I mean clerics, you're a melee fighter with some flavor-based magic. Some of them part their armor-clad cheeks and fought magic, others bonk goblins with a hammer a bit more, but all of them are more or less capable to adapt to most situations. Except reasoning logic when it comes to their deities and holy scripture. Equipment-wise, you can wear anything you want. You want to spellcast more? Well, you don't need that heavy armor. You want to tank and plank? Well, there is a sect just for you. As a cleric, you'll have to get intimately familiar with death, or rather the pain threshold of your party's weakest link. Probably wizard, to know when it's time to boogie and call your sky mommy for a favor. See, in D&D and Baldur's Gate, you can let your party members fall to the floor and suck dirt for about one to two rounds, and think over their life choices after casting a fireball in melee range, before you actually need to do anything. Basically put, unlike video games, healing is overrated. All you need is just enough juice to get the idiot standing again and you're golden. Be you a dedicated healer or a weekend scab pretending to be one. I mean, war cleric. You'll be a good healer as long as you make sure that whatever the fuck barbarian managed to aggro this morning is dead and no one needs to waste money dumping wizard's corpse at the church for a resurrection. AGAIN! That is to say, when your party members are licking pavement, then it's time to heal, not during the fight. See, the way D&D as well as Baldur's Gate operate is on same principle. You can't out-heal the damage. So, best defense is good offense. Hey, Bob, how many Order sisters are male? I want to die! None of them! <laughs> Make it stop! So then, how do you fuck up a cleric? Well, there are many ways. However, most of them relate to chosen spells. So, in those spirits... <coughs> Come with me and let's learn how not to fuck up your morning toilet communion. Alright then, well we start off with the stats. Since rarely you'll pick a ranged cleric and you'll most likely don the heaviest block of steel as armor, you won't need dexterity. Or intelligence. Charisma is for roleplay, which leaves you with strength for melee damage, wisdom for spellcasting and constitution for health. Funnily enough, cleric is the exact opposite of monk. While sure, it does benefit from stats, they can be rock bottom low and you can still kick ass. In fact, if anyone's psychotic, here's a challenge. Play through a campaign with a life cleric with nothing but 8 points in each stat. Afterwards, let me know how much better than barbarian you ended up being anyways. Anyways, you also have spellcasting, and for cantrips not to colossally fuck up, produce flame, blade ward and light can go into the trash. Pick Sacred Flame and Guidance. And oh god, I can't tell you how amazing Baldur's Gate is by simply teaching the players how Guidance works. Seriously, in my near decade of D&D playing, having Cleric my most played class, thanks to this fucking game I learned new things how to play the class! God damn it, this is a good game! Also, from level 1 you already get to choose your brand of hypocrisy. Life Domain, the dedicated healer that still kicks ass. Light, the nuke spellcaster of the group. Trickery, a walking embarrassment that wants to be rogue so bad. Oh, and this is also the default Shadowheart's domain. Now, story-wise, I get why, but why? Knowledge, Dunning-Kruger effect. Nature, a failed druid, but still cool and versatile. Tempest, the other spellcaster, but not afraid to get intimate. And War, 
Did somebody say Warhammer 40k? But you're too pussy to play Paladin, and yet somehow you're just as powerful. Now I'll save you some time. Trickery, knowledge and nature domains fly straight into the dumpster. But if you really need that pass without trace so much, go pick a fucking druid or ranger. As for spells, well clerics are daily prepared spell casters. Meaning that every morning the father hypocrite while sitting on the shitter chooses which spells from every single cleric spell he's gonna use that day. Yes, all the spells are unlocked immediately, but if you don't have the spell bullets to cast them, well, you can't cast them. Anyways, then Larian decided to further fuck with the system, and now every time outside the combat in Baldur's Gate you can swap spells. However, you still can't cast a buff spell like let's say aid, remove it and expect to retain that extra HP. But when it comes to single use spells like cure wounds, restoration or especially remove curse, go wild. So then, the first level spells. Bane, garbage. Create water, garbage. Shield of faith, garbage. Command, eh. Sanctuary, highly situational, though if you know how to use it, you can start cheesing every encounter and it's pretty good for that. And protection, also situational. Which leaves you with bless, only good until something better comes along with concentration. Guiding bolt, it's a fucking trap, don't use it. But you got nothing better at this level anyways. Inflict wounds, a great early damage spell. Cure wounds, a waste of an action, but good in a pinch. And the only spell that you should care about, healing ward. Level 2, you get Channel Divinity. While Turn Undead is nice, each subclass gets something better instead. Since not to fuck up, you'll probably be playing Life, Light, Thunder or War Domain, so let's cut the chaff. Life Cleric gets more healing, so you can throw out that Cure Wounds. Light gets a cool nuke, Tempest can deal more damage, and War can hit stuff more precisely. Uh, this will be more important later. Level 3, we got access to second level spells. Enhance ability, prayer, protection, all garbage. Blindness, calm emotions, restoration, eh. Silence, a ritual castable and nice to have. Warding bond, no concentration and you get to share in the pain. It's pretty good. Aid, also no concentration spell that increases your HP. This is a must have and cast at all times after long rest. Or if you're playing D&D, before. Spirit weapon, bone section to cast, no concentration, crap damage, but still good to have. And Hold Person, a great pick, but has a chance to fail. And then extra some domain spells. Level 4, Toe Time. Here, without a single doubt, Warcaster is an absolute must to maintain concentration spells. The only domain that might pick something else is maybe War for Great Weapon Master, but that's if you want to gamble. Level 5, Destroy Undead now gets an upgrade. Eh, still not that good. But what's more important are the third level spells. Bestow Curses, garbage. Feign Death, garbage. Protection, garbage. Beacon of Hope, trap. And Daylight, a living meme to cheese Cassador fights, but otherwise crap. Anime Dead for Pokemon Hunters, and Remove Curse and Speak with the Dead, good utilities to have. Glyph, a good nuke in Baldur's Gate while very different in D&D, but still funny with cheese tactics. Mass Healing Ward, great, but first use up the basic Healing Ward, okay? Revivify, don't leave your house without it, or you're a bad cleric. And most importantly, Spirit Guardians. Now, thanks to Baldur's Gate, I've renewed my utter love for this spell. This is also where the debate begins. Hold versus Spirit Guardians, which should be your main concentration spell. While Hold completely disables an enemy, it also has a wisdom save spell. While Spirit Guardians deal straight damage, even if the creature saves, while limiting its movement and can hit multiple targets. For spellcaster clerics who stay at the back, of course Hold is going to be a better option, but majority of clerics play in the front lines, and I find Spirit Guardians to be a massive impact on an encounter. So take your pick. Oh, and also you get some domain spells. Level 6. Aside from spell slots and channel divinity charge, each domain also gets more, uh, domain-y. Life heals even more, including with the help action, funnily enough. Light can drop its pants and flash an enemy by blinding them, slightly better. Tempest, now every time dealing thunder or lightning damage, you can push that enemy away as well. And War can help its ally succeed a hit on top of its own. As for the other domains, well, again, the word underwhelming comes to mind. Level 7, we got access to 4th level spells. Banishment, good in a pinch. Death Ward, no concentration, means that like aid, cast it every morning. Guardian of Fate, garbage, and Freedom of Movement, garbage. Plus the main spells, most notably Light Clerics can now cast Fireball and Vol of Flame, which is bullshit levels of cool and good. Level 8, the second feat time. For melee clerics, Great Weapon Master is a good to have, while Spell Sniper for Spell Casters. Lucky is also a nice pick for any, or just simply go for ability score improvement. So long as you have Warcaster, you're good. Oh, and as for the mains, all of them get their brand flavored Divine Strike to finally increase the pathetic level of melee damage. See, only War Clerics at level 1 can get an extra attack, and even then only 3 times. So, for majority of players, 
playtime, your melee damage, no matter which domain you pick, is far secondary to your spell damage. Level 9, we got access to 5th level spells. Contagion. Garbage, except for that one random encounter when it manages to shine. This spell? Garbage. A flame strike? Less effective than you think, but still okay. Restoration. Utility? That's nice to have. Insect Plague, a decent AoE. Mass Cure Wounds, nice to have, but Healing Ward is still better. And Planar Binding, situational as fuck and I'm tempted to say it's garbage. Level 10, insert Deus Ex Machina. No, seriously, you get a Divine Intervention. No, not that one. It's basically Baldur's Gate's equivalent of a Wish spell. That's it, you won the game, no one is dying. Like ever. Coincidentally, because you can use it only once, ever. Even if you respect your character, it falls into that pocket of Oh, I better hold on to it for dear life and never use it. Ha! My precious! My precious! At 11, you get one level 6 spell slot and 6 spells to choose from. Now, I argued with my friend Woofie which one's better, Planar Ally or Hero's Feast. On one hand, Hero's Feast stacks with 8, giving you 12 extra HP, great passive immunities and advantage to wisdom saving throws, that altogether invalidate many late game battles. While Planar Ally, especially Jin, adds another minion to your group that deals decent amount of damage, great maneuverability and has budget loads of health. Now personally, I'm in the camp Planar Ally, but what I'm certain of is Blade Barrier has its moments while the other three are, well, kinda shit. And finally, at 12, you got one last feat or ability score. So then kids, of middle ages and up, what did we learn? Well, you'll be mostly running around either slinging hold person and letting your friends do all the cool stuff, or sprout spirit guardians and join the fray yourself. Well, in either case, not to fuck up a cleric, every morning, spawn every Pokemon you can, cast aid, cast death ward, cast warding bond, and don't heal the idiot wizard until he's sucking dirt for sustenance. That's basically how you play as a cleric. There's so much variety in playstyles, I can't but to gravitate towards it. You can do everything. Hell, you can beat both D&D and Baldur's Gate by playing nothing but a party of clerics. Well, that is until the moment you start discussing scripture and start PvP.